An iconic British backdrop for a striking new launch. The new Oyster 565 got off to an impressive start. And while she might be the smallest in the range, this is an important new model for a company that has opened a new chapter. The launch of the G5 range was the start, bringing big boat thinking into a new size range of blue water cruisers. The 885 and 825 were the first of the new generation that proved popular from the outset and paved the way for the 745. Now it's the turn of the 565. But simply shrinking a popular format doesn't work. Striking a balance between a well-appointed, spacious and adaptable family cruiser with a fully fitted blue water yacht with long legs that will eat up the miles is a tricky task. And so the project started with a fresh look at the fundamentals. And the first indication of that can be seen in some of the most simplest details. Take her bow, a big plum bow. And when you look from the front looking back, the fine sections forward that then open out into flared sections as you go further aft, make it quite clear that this is a very modern hull form. And with that modern hull form comes a very contemporary looking deck. For starters, just behind me, the fixed bow sprit here for the Jenica and for the anchor, a modern feature. But look how uncluttered this foredeck is. And not only uncluttered, but flush as well around all the hatches. But there are other details that set her out as a modern day fast cruiser. Look at these uh, Genoa tracks, for example, set right in, inboard. That gives you great pointing and great control over the head saw. Then there's the chain plates. Right out at the gunnel edge. These are composite chain plates and it means that you can have full width spreaders and a great deal of security and stability in the mast. But look at the detailing. This is the kind of stuff you only normally see on a big boat, on a super yacht even. There are other details aboard this boat that come from their experience in the bigger boats in the range. One of those is the run of the jib sheets. Look where they go. Through the bullseyes, very close to here, snug, in through a fairing and out onto the primary winch. Now the key thing about this is that that entire jib run keeps the sheet well away from the guest cockpit. Now here's a detail I really like, the main sheet arrangement. It's right next to the helm station on this winch here. So it's dead easy to get at it, ease the main out or sheet it in. Simple. The helm station is one of the key areas of the 565 where a departure from the norm has allowed some big improvements. Twin wheels are among the most obvious details that offer several advantages. For a start, it allows superb access through this whole cockpit area with brilliant access. You don't have to clamber over people, you just walk straight through. But also, when you're actually sailing the boat, absolutely clear vision forwards, you can sit on the combings, here, see the telltales perfectly. You can sit in the seating here, which is very secure with this wrap around around the edge. You can move over to leeward. You can do the same over here. Look up at the telltales, look to leeward, check to see what's down there. It's a very, very comfortable boat to sail indeed from behind the helm. And she's a quick boat too. We've got 10 knots of true wind. We're reaching along at 8.2 knots. That's pretty impressive. But while her straight line performance, upwind or down, will get a tick in the box, it's her handling under power and at close quarters that will be on many people's minds, especially with her twin rudders. Here, a set of retractable bow and stern thrusters that are fitted as standard make light work of turning her on a sixpence. She can literally be turned around her keel in her own length or move sideways onto the dock. And even when she's at rest, there are features that mark her out as having more in common with her bigger sisters. The 565 is a very easy boat to manage and a significant step forward from her predecessors. And when it comes to her interior, the story's much the same. For anyone who's familiar with the Oyster range, the 565's interior won't really come as a big surprise. She's got a great big, spacious, airy saloon 
a navigation station on the starboard side with plenty of space for instrumentation. She's got a longitudinal galley on the port side. And when it comes to sleeping accommodation, a double cabin up forward, twin on port, and a great big owner's cabin aft. But it's only when you start to look at the detail that you realize how far this game has moved on. And one of the big clues to that is the seascape windows in the main saloon. It makes a tremendous difference to the feel down below. But that's only the start. So the double forward is much as you'd expect, a really nice big berth up forward with stowage all around. But the thing that really grabs you up here is the fantastic amount of light that comes in with this superb longitudinal skylight that runs down the center of the deck. It really makes quite a difference. The other thing is the headroom and the volume in this cabin. It's really quite remarkable for a boat that is, after all, only 56 foot long. Now, as we move a little bit further back on the port side, we've got these two pilot berths, a pretty straightforward layout there. Again, lots of great light and uh, space in this cabin. And then opposite that, we've got a heads over on the starboard side. Now, this might be one of the smallest and on the face of it, simplest cabins in the boat, but actually it's my favorite because for the size of the boat to have this multi-purpose area here is really quite a bonus. For a start, there's a fantastic sea berth here, low down in the boat, in the center of the boat. That is gonna be really comfortable when you're actually at sea. We've got a washing machine here. We've got space to store sails or foul weather gear or whatever you need to. And in addition to that, you can turn it into a little workshop as well. It's got a very, very handy little bench that comes down and literally just folds out like that. A fantastic place to do all kinds of tasks and jobs. Now, when it comes to the engineering side of the boat, of course, it's important to be able to get at everything. And once again, there's been a lot of thought gone into this great big door to get you into the engine room. And OK, this is on the starboard side, but there's also very, very good access on the port side. Again, really, really well thought out. Lots of space, lots of accessibility to all the kind of areas you might need to for servicing. The galley is as much as you would expect to find on an oyster, but there are a few little touches that also stand out. I particularly like the way the fiddles are actually built into the worktop space here. I like the fact it's got an extractor hood over here. That's really clever, the way they built it in underneath the side deck, but you've still got the traditional ventilation from a port like there and another one here. And then moving further back, we've got a microwave, a fridge freezer, all very much as you'd expect. But let's be honest, this has got to be the best cabin on the boat. I mean, just look at the space in here and the view from these seascape windows is absolutely tremendous. Either side of the boat, the light comes flooding in. You've got a tremendous view. Plus you've got light coming in from these port lights up here. It makes the place feel so spacious and it is. The bottom line is clear. The 565 is a spacious boat above or below decks, yet without compromising elsewhere. Indeed, large lockers on deck and practical stowage in her accommodation mark her out as a step forward in this aspect too. So what's she really like on the helm though? Well, that's the really easy bit to answer. Lovely. She's so well balanced. And there's a couple of reasons for that. Without getting too techy about it, one of the first reasons is her twin rudders. And that really gives us such a good feel, such a lot of grip. I mean, we've got quite a heel on here, as you can see, and it's really so light on the helm. She's so manageable. And one of the things that makes those twin rudders possible is the distribution of buoyancy in this modern hull form. It doesn't work just sticking twin rudders on any old boat. This is a boat that's been designed to have those twin rudders and been designed to sail just as she is now and feel as light as she is. So while she might share the family looks and DNA, when you experience her in the flesh, it becomes immediately clear that the 565 is different. Make no mistake, this is a very modern water cruiser.